I'm Hunter. I'm Rebecca. I'm Caitlin. I'm Nessa. This is the Family Show. Howdy folks, welcome back to my top 100 games of all time. I'm Hunter, and this is always my snow bunny, Rebecca. <laughs> what? Snow bunny? You're not your dress like you're going to go on hit the slopes. Because it's cold outside. You're the crazy one. You know, it's getting to be winter in Texas right now, as of this filming. Who's dressed appropriately? It I'll is, it is festive all year long. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're looking at my... 50 to 41. Let's look at the stats. Ooh, stats. Let's look at the stats. So thrilling. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> this is where the resolution Help? effect comes home to oh, okay. roost because okay. in this top 10, this set of 10, we have only one new game. Just one. Okay. Three games that went down. One that stayed exactly the same. You are so good at that. That's random. But wait for it. Five games that went up my list. Yeah. Five You're right. that the resolution, went up. You never have this many that go up. No. Never, no. never, never, never. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, so five games went up. And also, I'm, I'm calling this the heavy game section with one oddball. Sounds like this house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's jump right in with my number 50, which is on the other side of the page. Oh my, moving My up. 50, it was my 71 last time. And it went, went up 21 places. You know why? Because we haven't played this game in a while. You haven't And I don't care what Rebecca says about this game. This game is this game is awesome. And that mm. is Tricarion Lords of Illusion. It's not a bad... Oh wait, Legends of Illusion. I like Lords of Illusion better. Legends <laughs> of Illusion. Ooh, it's, it's an like illusion. <laughs> For carry on. So this is a heavy duty worker placement game of worker placementness. It's resource management. It's got some card drafting, some you get, you get workers that work for you, you do all kinds. Eventually you're gonna put on a show and it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, it's magical, you might say. <laughs> it's a magical show. My only beef okay. The the game is good. The mechanisms are game good. Game is a, really good. I just think it's kind of silly that you're like a stick and a piece of glass and poof, you have a magic trick. And I'm like, we already discussed this. I don't know why. It's a hold up for me. It just, it's a hang up, whatever you want to call it. Review review the tapes further back. We already talked about how if something says like brick on it, it's literally a brick. It can't be like something or this is shaped out of a brick or something. I don't know. Shaped out of a brick. Do you do brick <laughs> sculptures in this? Or now? glass. I was trying to try glass. That would work better. It was like a piece of glass. A glass could be uh, anything. It could be a mirror. It could be... A piece of glass. A piece of glass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> My point exactly. Don't no, listen to her. That aside, it's a solid game. This game is really, really cool. So we got the... Uh, is this is the Kickstarter version because it has the cool little sleeve. I actually bought this it's at a... It's a uh, Flea market thing at a con. The fleas? They sold it to you? I bought it some for some fleas at, at a flea market. <laughs> you had fleas to give? I'm yes. scared. I hope some, you gave them all away. <laughs> well, if it's a flea market, you'd be buying and selling fleas, right? Possibly. Or training them, right? Don't they have flea circuses? I'm so confused right now. So to carry on, it's a, it's a, it's a heavier... It's, a, it's on the top shelf. We, we talked about this. The top shelf has all the heavy games. It is at the far end. You know, that's probably not wise games. to put the heavy games on top because that makes your shelf top heavy. Like... That sounds like a hazard. They're not necessarily physically heavy. Oh, okay. But they are physically heavy. You know. <laughs> but we are going to die under our But if you're looking for a heavy-duty worker placement game, which I think is incredibly thematic, <laughs> Lords of Illusion is the one to get. The theme's an illusion. But hey! Ah. I was like, it's a, it's no, a, it's it's a heavy Euro game. If you like heavy Euros with a little bit of a, a little bit of theme mixed in. That's better. I give that theme a solid <laughs> meh. <laughs> To do hunter speak. Well, it's got a lot. I mean, it's got no, a lot of cool lot me for mechanisms going on. Let's see if I. If I the art's kind of cool. The top 50. I like the ideas. Oh, I like the way they have like you managing your having your managers and your all the the workers that are helping you with different Correct. things. They, they so they that's improve, really they cool. They prove their different roles. And yeah, stuff. it's really neat. It's an unusual. 
I don't see this kind of system set up in very many games at all. I can't think of any others. Maybe Shakespeare has people. You have your you... little. You have your little workbook. Yeah, you have your own little book. It's cool. I like the idea. Tells you all the different spells or illusions, I guess. Not spells, illusions. <laughs> like you're not casting spells. <laughs> you're a magician. Cast, cast a spell on me. <laughs> anyway, I love it. So you basically have to get the, the tricks. Have different components. You have to gather. You have to have so many of this component, so many of that component to be able to perform the trick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, let's see. Let's see. What? You don't even know what the components are. A rope and a teapot. Oh no, that's oil. That's the oil can, isn't it? And some paper and a piece of wood. Guess what magic trick that is, suckas? A floating table. Well, think about it. So you need the wood for the table. That one's actually better than some you need, of the others. You need the oil to, to make it float. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. I love it. So if you like heavy Euro games, yeah, this is one you should check out. I don't know how much you know about the game after all that nonsense. <laughs> But it's like, magical. That's all you need again, to know. Again, how do people feel about these stupid sleeves? You know, I'm kind of kind of indifferent. Well, I think they know how you feel about the stupid sleeves. How about we do it the other way? It's <laughs> quite easier to do it the other way, right? <laughs> Watch awkwardness on tape live. All right, get that uh. out of here. All right. That was my number 50. <laughs> Tricarion Legends of Illusion. I like Lords of Illusion. Lords of Hellas. Oh, wait. Lords of Illusion. My number 59. This one go up? I don't think this one went up. This is the one. This is one. This is the one. The one. The no. There's three. This is one of the three that went down. Oh, that went down. I thought I was like. I, thought but I, I still love it. It's this. holding strong. I think it's been on my list since the very beginning, and it has. Very good. But it's consi no, it hasn't start. consistently gone down. But there Ooh, you go. Interesting. Has not consistently gone. down. It did so go up. I'm looking this wrong. It went up from 63 oh, to no, 49, and that is my. Oh, but it's still in roughly the same spot. Shadows of Camelot. My my one of my favorite hidden trigger games. One of my favorite hidden trader games. He loves hidden <laughs> trader games. We all know this. I love me some hidden trader, especially if I'm the trader that is hidden. This is one of the few games that I'm. I'm usually like kind of met on the theme, with the medieval theme and stuff. And I love the way this game works. This game is cool. Yeah, but it's it's got, it's it's playing poker hands. <laughs> it is. It's not like it's. I think what's cool about it is it's such an intense game, but it's not a difficult game. So you can teach it and pretty much have anybody play with you and you can have a really good time with it because you're like, okay, all you need <laughs> to make this work is this. You know, I, it'd be a little harder if they were the trader, I think. But honestly, I, I mean, haven't you played with quite a few varieties of people? I mean, yes. I just think it's well, anyway, pretty successful. Shadows of Camelot, Hidden Trader Game, you're all the knights of the round table. And one of you. Potentially is a traitor unless you have it. Unless you set, set it to I always have a traitor. It's random if you have a traitor or not normally. Um, when you're a traitor, you basically go into different locations around Camelot. You're doing a different deeds or tasks. And you basically complete these tasks by playing cards numbered from 1 to 5. So like in one place you may need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Another place you may need uh, you know, a full house. Another place you need this and that. The trick is that um, you have to do a good action. And then you also have to do a bad action, and the bad actions vary in how bad they are for the most part. So if you do one that's really bad, people start giving you the side eye, like, why'd you do that when you could have done this other thing that is as bad? And you get the whole betray? traitor vibe. Did you betray us? So you're going through <laughs> and you're trying to complete as many of these tasks as you can before the before bad things happen that give you basically negative points. So you're comparing your positive points for completing tasks versus negative points from, from bad things happening. And if you end up with more positive than negative at the end, you, you win. If you end up with more negative than positive, then the traitor wins. Or you lose if there's no traitor. Um, oh, that'd be sad. That would be sad, <laughs> losing without a losing traitor. Losing and no traitor. Um, but I like it. I like hidden role games. This one's the, the one the ones that people will start accusing people like first round. You're already giving people the eye and stuff. <laughs> A lot of games is kind of a slow burn. You're like, you start kind of the one. What is? What is it? This one's like, why did you do that? I mean, right off the bat, everything you do. <laughs> well, I like it. It's it's not that heavy of a game, um, but it's a little bit of a longer one. Also, yeah, a couple it's hours. Long. Yeah, it's a couple solid hours. An hour, say an hour to hour and a half. I really. Depends. I think it's an hour and a half to two if you've got the full group. Though. Yeah, if you get the full player count. But if you're looking for a, a fun little hidden trader game, um, this is a a solid one. Shadows over Camelot. I don't know if it's available anymore. I don't know. I hope it is. It's pretty cool. So that went up. I'm not like, confused. This next one also. No, this next one's the one that stayed exactly the same. No. 
Man, my, my eyes are dead. Uh-oh. No, say it is the one that stayed the same. I need to put better grid lines across so I can follow it across. Thank you. This is the one that stayed exactly the same. So, Shadow over the Claim a lot, I consider the light, like the light version of the game. So, if I got like okay. gamers, that pseudo gamers, non gamer types, I'd play Shadows over Claim a lot. But if okay. you got your heavy gamers, okay. you pull out Battlestar Galactica. Yes. <laughs> so these, these these two games give me the same sort of feeling, just different lengths of games and different weights, so they kind of landed in the same spot. That's interesting. And this stayed in the exact same spot? Yep. It was 48 last time. It's 48 this time. That's pretty cool. Okay. So Battlestar Galactica is, again, it's a hidden trader game based on the Battlestar Galactica TV series. So you have a, have a Cylon in your mist. And you're trying to figure out if they're a bad guy or a good guy. Darn Same sisters. way as Chattel of Camelot, but a little different. You're doing these tasks. Usually it's just surviving. So you're you're basically traveling through space. All these bad guys, Cylon people are attacking you. And you're trying to fight them off in time to jump to your next spot. And then they attack you again. And you jump again and jump and jump and jump. And eventually ends. you jump out of the game and you win. So... That just didn't sound right somehow. <laughs> um, but there's silent. There's, obviously, there's a bad guy among you, and you're basically trying to you do hidden votes and hidden things are being done. Um, your actions can be questionable. What you do and don't do. You can throw people <laughs> in the brig. You can get elected to different positions in the game to uh, um, gives you more power. And if you get Cylon in one of those positions, he has more obviously more power than than you would want him to have. Um, at that kind of the midpoint in the game, more bad guys show up. So you have people that switch. It's like the if you watch the TV series, it's the sleeper sleeper agent guys wake up, and you can have more bad guys involved in the game. To, Those wacky uh, toasters towards the halfway, and uh, it's just a really solid game. I, I think I've played this game probably I don't know, five six times now. I think every single one of them came down to the last round. Oh, of the it's game. crazy! It's, it's crazy! It's, 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 it's absolutely crazy for me, at least. For the, my experience, I've heard other people say that it's way imbalanced, but in my experience, it's always come down to like the last die roll, the last <laughs> combat. You're running out of food or population. You're struggling to make that last jump. It just seems so balanced. Uh, I think they did a really good job, but. Again, I've heard people say Cylons always win or humans always win or something like that. But so we are either terrible at it or everybody else is. One of the well, not everybody. I think we're. Just, I think we just like, play this so infrequently we don't know all the the, the, the ways little, to tweak it. The little tricks yeah. to, to to make your characters more powerful. I don't know. True, that's so true. But anyway, if you're looking for a meaty, <laughs> that one, the one before light, easy going. This one's this one's meaty and heavy and got some rules going on, especially just with the base game. Uh, this is a good one. This one's out of print, so and the price of this one's going up through the through so the So play it at a con. <laughs> or find Have a friend. Fun. Or yeah. find a friend. Find play a friend. with us. Come play. <laughs> That's my number 48. Ooh, with us. Battlestar Galactica. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, let's take a break. Let's take a break from those hidden traders, and let's go to the not-so-hidden traders. In obvious traders? Obvious traders and merchants and marauders. So sad to see this so low. Though. This guy plummeted, and I will tell you why. Okay. It was it dropped from my number 10 to 47. What the heck happened? I wasn't playing, is that why? No. <laughs> did, you do not recall our last play? I didn't play with you guys the last game. You didn't play with us? No, it was you and Carl and Tommy. Oh, he shall not show the name. You named him. <laughs> So we had a kind of wonky play last time. Because I wasn't there. It was kind of wonky. We got Someone got in like a loop that we couldn't stop from happening. <laughs> and it, and it, we just couldn't figure out how to break it. It was weird. I don't know if it was just the, the game, the board set, or what was going on, hmm. or that no one hmm. was really being piratey, or what was going on. It just seemed, we just had a wonky play. And and that, I, I this is the year where I let, my role series didn't play greatly affect how I rate games. And so the last play was kind of, eh. Just kind of, eh. That's so sad. So, I love those games. So it, it, it plummeted to 47. I still love it. It's my 47. I still love the game. Yeah, obviously. I think it, I think it was a fluke that we that something some weirdness happened. I don't know what was going on with the I'm telling you it's because I wasn't playing. Um, but basically, <laughs> someone was scoring some points and we just couldn't stop. We couldn't figure out a way to stop them from doing it. That's funny. Because they're popping from port to port 
and we couldn't stop them. Were you playing with all the extras and stuff? Because we have those expansions. Were you playing with all those? No, I think the problem was that we were, weren't playing with a a rule that we normally play with. Ah, uh, there you go. For, just for your, your guys' enjoyment, I'm going to dig through the rules and tell you the rule that we weren't playing with. Oh, that sounds interesting. So the rule that we didn't play with that caused the wonkiness. I remember now what why 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 we had the wonkiness. We I like the fact that we're using wonkiness as wonkiness. every other we, sentence. We did not play with the cutthroat variant. Basically, we, we, we uh, the cutthroat variant okay. is what we didn't play with. This basically lets you off-term scout. So basically, if someone, if so, basically if someone, some one person was going from port to port, back and forth, just doing stuff to get victory points. We couldn't stop them because there was no way. They basically you can't attack someone in port. Port, yeah. If they're always okay. in port, you can't ever attack them, okay. right? Okay. The uh, the cutthroat variant, which we we played with because we figured that. I think I remember now that we figured that out a long, a long time, time ago. ago. You can scout someone when it's not your turn. So basically, if you're sitting there outside the port and they move into your space, you can scout them and attack them and prevent them from doing that. Nice. Okay. So it dropped because I had a bad play, but I think my gut tells me it's because we didn't play with this this variant. Oh, okay. But anyway. Yeah, because that just kind of lets everybody get but away with it. But it was a bad play, so it's going to have to redeem itself. It's, it got punitated. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to come back. English and prove it hunter. and prove itself again okay. to get back up in the into the, the top tier of my game. There you go. But if you're looking for a sandbox open world style pirate theme game, this is the one to get. Just either play play with all the goodies. Play with all the goodies and the cutthroat variant apparently. <laughs> I the expansion sees of glory is glorious for this. I said it. I said it. Womp womp. <laughs> it's good. It is good. Seize of Glory is probably one of probably in my top ten expansions uh, for games. I will not lie. She 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 speaks the truth. Well, I, I I love this game. I'm, I'm of course going to give it another chance because it's still one of my favorites. Darn right you will. And Just... we'll see what if that cutthroat variant redeems it. Because I think that's what we did wrong. Because I can't remember who it was. It was either it was either the person to not be named or Carl. Was popping in about our ports and they basically they, we knew he, they knew that we were going to kill them. Yeah, so they would just go from port to port, port to port. That's funny. They never they never stayed out to sea the whole time. Smart, but so that's why they added the cutthroat. You can't variant. be nice. Yeah, that's right. You can't be nice in this game. You're pirates for crying out loud. Well, without the cutthroat throat. variant, though, there's nothing you can do. Arr. Anyway, that is my number forty-seven. Shiver me timbers. Merchants at Marauders. It dropped 37 spots. Merchants, what are you doing? Let's talk about a game that went up. It's time for another Vital Lacerda game. Good lord. Did I say it right that time? Vital, yes. Yeah, I said it right. Vital. I know. You make such a big deal out of it. It's so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> another time for another Lacerda game. <laughs> Lacerda. I always say T. Lacerda game. And that is Lizboa! You know what's coming? Prepare yourself! Good lord. <laughs> Why must you definitely? Because this thing weighs like 10 pounds. That'll teach you to watch this show. <laughs> Kapow! Lizboa! I hope you all adjust your sound accordingly Liz when you see Boa. him come on screen. This is a monster. It game. is the game of off shade purple. Boy, is it. How many shades of off purple can they pick? Quite a few, apparently. I am so sorry for any of you that suffer with some any kind of color blindness. I don't think this would be a friendly game. Lizboa. But it's pretty. So this is a heavy Euro game. I'm going to be saying that a lot this round. Ooh. This is a heavy Euro game. It is set in the city of Lisbon. Lisboa, I guess. Lisbon. Yeah, Lisboa. Lisbon. 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 And uh, it was destroyed in the olden times. I'm sure it says when. Yeah. 1755. They had, it has like it an earthquake, a, a flood, and a fire in the same year. It was... <laughs> no, I think it was like a... Yeah, yeah it was an earthquake. I think it was a tsunami. Earthquake fall, oh, a tsunami and a fire. I was going to like, it was more than just a little flood. It was a tsunami. Oh. Well, there's flooding involved with tsunamis. It's a little faster than a... Lisboa surfer, the earthquake of magnitude 8.5 to 9. Yeah, that's insane. Followed by a devastating tsunami and Which then three days of raging fires. The city was almost totally destroyed. Anyway. That's not a fun so year. So what you are, you're, you're nobles of Lis Lisboa, of Lisbon. 
to they you're basically rebuilding the city. So you're taking all the rubble and you're gathering it. So you're basically gathering cube slash resources. You use those resources to build new shops, and those shops make money when when you build them. So it, it's one of those games where. Again, all his games. It's gonna sound like a broken record because I say about the all his games. It's one of those ones that's incredibly hard to teach. A lot of things going on, lots of stuff to do. But at the end, you're taking a card and playing, or playing a card and taking a card. Yeah, it's super elegant. Yeah, so you basically play a card on, and you basically activates a location. That location goes has a multitude of different choices, uh, things to do. Um, and then you take another card for your next, basically, next round. And you got all kinds of things going on. It's basically, you're collecting these cubes off of the city, and you're basically putting, you're basically putting shops out in the city area. And then you have these nobles over here that you can influence. These are the three different cards, you, types of cards you can play. And they do different things based on uh, what you want to do. It's basically pseudo worker work placement. Um, but I love it. You've got a lot going on. This is solid. Euro game. You like heavy euros. You like game again games with oh a little gosh, bit of theme. Yeah. And his games always have have a, a modicum of theme. More than a modicum, I think for a euro game, <laughs> they're insanely thematic. Yeah, they are very thematic. So yeah, you really do feel like you're gathering up the different rubble when you're building if the cities. If only and... cleaning up a city was as easy as picking up cubes. <laughs> I love this game. It's one of my favorites. I love it. I, like I said, I haven't seen a Lacerda game that I haven't liked, so I've liked all of them. Yeah. I haven't played CO2 yet. That may be one I might not like. Oh, yeah, I it, that. Because it's that like semi cooperative or something weird. Oh, geez. Here we go. Yeah. Forget that. But Let Lisboa. The cities burn. This is a good one. So if you like the Galarus and you haven't branched out, this is probably maybe the second one you want to do. This one or another game I'll talk about much later in the list. Um, this is one you want to branch out to. Yeah, um, it's super. If you good. like Gal Galarus, this will have the same kind of feel of of depth, but simplicity of play. Yeah, it's depth, a simple choice with simplicity of play. With, yeah, it's it's such a cool game. Let's go ahead and crack these open. I like cracking open the the Eagle Griffin <laughs> games because they're always so nice. They're pretty. Well, and it again, we we're joking about the colors, but even so, the softer colors they may be a bear to to decipher if you're colorblind, but they are easy on the eyes in general. Oh, the cards went everywhere. Well, we're not opening that. Fail! That, this sort of works? <laughs> well, we, <laughs> really? we, we don't, we, we don't, uh, we're not careful with how we stack these stack our games. The it's only the cards. Only the oh, card. that's not that only bad, the cards actually. Escaped. They're small. It's not a sealed type thing. So yeah, and each, it's got little compartments, and you can just put the bag, I and mean, we keep them in the bag so that if they do get loose, look, oh, they're still together. Again, the only thing that came out were the cards. These cards over here. This is a... Look at this. What is this nonsense? It's a wig. <laughs> that's a start player. I know. Why? But you got your cards. These are the... They should have made it a, a real a glare wig. glare of a glare of a glare. Those are the do cards you, know, you Do you play. know what they should have done? They should have made a real wig for the first player. Put a, you actually wear a, a wig? A powdered <laughs> wig that's like beehived up about a foot over your head. You got, I would wear you that. The, the three and four player stuff. We need to get a powdered wig, so you have to play that. That's what I say. Here's the rubble. Yeah. Barney rubble? So it's their different types of building materials that you can collect from the rubble. It's the same kind of colors that reminds you of the great um, Grand Austria Hotel, so I always look at that and go, is that cake? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's rubble. <laughs> it's rubble. It's rubble. Anyway, I love this game. It's neat. If you're looking, for, if you're looking for a solid heavy euro, this is one to try. I'd probably, if you're going to pick a first... A first uh, Lacerda game, it'd probably be the Galaris, but this might be a second one. If you're looking for to, yeah, to, to, to continue the trend, I could see that. Doesn't want to, wouldn't want to sit. Oop, it's, got a, <laughs> it's got this little dingle bit. Fun with board games. I give up. Watch Hunter juggle packing a. Box. I give up. Rebecca can do this. Here you go. Enjoy. No, put it away. Put it away. I am gonna put it away. You gotta go ahead and just finish doing one. Finish doing it. Yeah, smart dance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there it is, Lisboa. It was my 63. It moved up to 46. Let's talk about another game that moved up. We played this one again, and we've Moving this become way. our definitive favorite. A, a definitive favorite between my village and village. Oh, oh. And that is well then, village, village. 
Just keep cranking out the Euro game. This one isn't the heavy Euro game. This is probably the 90 minute sweet spot Euro. Yep. Um, this That's one. medium weight. Medium. Medium. I like it. So uh, this is a uh, cube pusher in a way. So basically, you basically go to to activate a spot. You take some cubes off that spot, and then you do the action of the spot. So you're basically in a city. Actually, they, why are they only showing part of the map? It's really strange. Let me pull the board out. <laughs> so you're in a city. Oh dear. Maybe I'm not pulling the board out. Why not? It's all the way at the bottom. So it's always in the bottom. Just dump it. But I don't wanna. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. No, we're not. <laughs> Bad suggestion, Rebecca. <laughs> yeah, it was all me. I'm trying to see if there's a picture of the board. There is on the back. It's only part of the but board. But it's only part of the board. That's lame. But, well, I'll show you part of the board. So anyway, there's a there's a there's a city, and it's you go to the, you picture. basically there's all sorts of little one. circle spots on the city that activate different parts of the city. They have cubes there, so you take a cube off that spot, and that shows that you're activating. I was showing them the city. <laughs> shows that you're activating that spot. That's the whole city activating that spot to take that action and then the cubes are used to pay for what you do to this thing the cubes <laughs> we're off the rails here the cubes pay for things that you do at those actions so for example you may go to uh, the place that gets you uh, your get some wheat for your farm but you take a cube off you may need that cube later to go to the craftsman to make a plow so it's kind of they kind of chain off of each other and there's also plaguey cubes as well out there that you don't want to take but someone eventually has well, to that, take them. And you can tell by this board, that guy's not going to last long so you might want to put him somewhere you don't care about much because <laughs> he croaks off and then you have to put young people in that place. So you have generations in this game. So you start off with... People die! As, you, as, you, as time goes by, as you use time to take actions because the different actions takes a different amount of time you eventually cross the, the bridge where the Grim Reaper is and it, you have to kill off one of your workers, basically uh, your lowest generation workers. So Dark there's some strategy speed. on how you place your workers <laughs> because some workers you're going to put on the board and they're going to stay there potentially till the end of the game. So you have to be strategic on what versions you put where because they're eventually going to grow old and die. So It's the circle of life. It is the circle life. of life. But it's, it's, a good, it's a really solid Euro game if you like... Um, you know, games. It's basically almost, it's almost action selection. I wouldn't say it's worker placement. Action selection, fate selection, um, some resource management, many different paths to victory. You can do traveling. You can do stuff for the church. But you don't can, get attached to your meeples. You can go. You can build up resources and build things and sell them off at the market. There is there is a lot of different ways to play the game. Um, we have both the expansions, the inn and the port, which uh, the port tricks up the travel area. So instead of walking along a little road, now you're, you're actually traveling on a boat. <laughs> traveling on a boat to different places and basically picking up and dropping off goods and people, potentially. Ooh, um, that's rough. And then the inn adds uh, dudes that give you superpowers, basically. So it's it's they're both really solid expansions. They're not necessarily essential expansions, but they're solid expansions. But... If you're looking for a midweight euro that has a Death. lot of things going on, plague <laughs> with the interesting dying workers theme thing mechanism, this might be the game for you. <laughs> when we played this one again. I remember how much I liked it. Yeah, she remembered how much she hated my village. Yeah, I like this one way more, <laughs> and it's just it's funny because it's kind of an oddly dark game because you're always just do 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 placing your meeples. Yeah. And it's like oh no, it is too old. Actually, if you I don't know if you can see, there's actually a little cemetery for your yes, workers. There's a so as as workers meeples. die, you fill up the cemetery. Well, you, you fill up the board. You fill up the yard, the, and then basically once it once a certain amount of people call. die, the game that triggers the end of the game. Because <laughs> your town's filled with plague because you have no place to bury them. It's not place. plague. They're just growing old. Just They're working hard on the farm. I'm saying all the buried people right in the town is going to cause plague. Just saying. It's a dark game. Plague. All right. <laughs> so let's break up the, wow. heavy, the heavy Euro. I thought we were doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, not necessarily this right. Oh, man. You let's break here. up all the heavy-ish games with, really? something, with a light little almost oh. party weight game. But... It's not a hidden trader game, but it's a hidden spy game. Oh, dear me. This low. I'm shocked. Yeah, it's kind of played out. I'm kind of waiting for, for getting a chance to play this guy. It may Ooh. go back up again. Ooh. But we're not talking about this game, which is Spyfall Time Travel. <laughs> we're talking about Spyfall, the base game. Okay. Which is crazy enough. 
So this is a party-ish social deduction game. Basically, you are uh, a bunch of people at a place. You might be at a restaurant or a hotel or a circus or a zoo. And one person so that it doesn't know where everyone else is. And you're going to do questioning each other and try to figure out who doesn't know where they are. <laughs> so, so for example, you, if you're a restaurant, you can either play the basic, basic game where everyone just knows they're at a restaurant. And one person doesn't. And you ask these other questions. So you might say, hey, why did you come here today? <laughs> they'll say, well, you know, I work here or whatever, right? And you go back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, uh, time will run out or everyone will realize who the spy is. You'll do an uh, accusation. If you're right, if you're right, the spy gets an opportunity to guess where everyone is. If he guesses it right, then the spy wins. If he doesn't, the spy loses. Or if you don't figure out who the spy is, or you accuse the wrong person, uh, the spy wins as well. Then there's a more advanced version where everyone has a role that has <laughs> something to do with the location. So, for example, at the restaurant, you may be a waiter. You may be the bus boy. You may be the person cleaning dishes. You could be a you, customer. You could be a customer at the restaurant. So when people ask your questions, <laughs> if you get into the theme and get into the game, you'll answer it in such a way that your person would answer, right? So, for example, if you ask the person that's eating at the restaurant, why are you here? And you'll they'll say, well, I come here all the time because... You don't want to be too specific. I come here all the time because I like this place. Another person might say, if they're the busboy, they're saying, I hate coming here. I dread this place. Which would make no sense for a restaurant, but that's how they answer, the, answer their, as a character, right? <laughs> right. So, it's it's a fun little game. It's uh, hilarious. Let's, let's, let's peruse. Shall we peruse? Let's peruse. No, let's not peruse, because that means look thoroughly through everything. Let's peruse. We are going to peruse a location. Okay. <laughs> One location. <laughs> so, here we go. So, for example... Is this the one with all spies? <laughs> no. For example, this is Rebecca, and this is me. Oh, dear. So we are at the beach, and I am a paraglider. I am a food vendor. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have two distinct And one person answers. will be the spy, the spy and have no clue that this is what everyone else sees, that you're at the beach. Mm -hmm. That's how, that's pretty much the whole game. I just taught you how to play Spyfall. There you go. What do we got? Let's go through them real quick. Oh, Food beach. vendor, paraglider, thief. <laughs> at the beach. <laughs> yeah. Entertainment director, photographer with a monkey, a lifeguard. I can just imagine answering all And a questions. vacationer. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? Shut up, Bongo! <laughs> I can't wait to play this game again. <laughs> if you if you hadn't guessed, I get into this game. No, and that's why it's my number forty six. Such a little wallflower. Forty six, right? I hope I'm right. Am I right? Am I right? I'm not even close. Forty four. <laughs> There's a reason I have this card in front of me. Let's keep track of this for me. Need to make it a large print. Forty four. <laughs> Is Spyfall, and I think this one actually is one of the ones that went down. Not Spryfall. <laughs> yes, it dropped, dropped from 35. Went down. Spyfall. Alright, get that out of here. Blind person. Alright, we're officially on the front page. We got this Ooh many games to go. Alright, so here we go. It's time for another Feld. It's time for another Feld. This is, I would say, if I had to guess, if I had to take a gander, I would say this is the highest percentage of people's favorite film. Okay. I think I know what it is then. And that is The Castles yep. of Burgundy. It's so good. My number 43. It dropped, so, just, so a, good. dropped just a, a wee bit. A wee bit from 39. So it's right there. Oh, okay. Old okay. and strong. Okay. The Castles of Burgundy. This is our first Feld. And it was a delightful Feld. And we played this and we're like, it's a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, we I immediately started researching Feld and Feld games, and that began the the sprawling Feld madness, Feld madness behind, us. behind us. It starts at that end and goes all the way to here. And it's up there, too. And there's someone on top that, that, that shall not be named. What? I love Amerigo. <laughs> <laughs> so, Castles of Burgundy, this is a dice drafting game? Yeah. Dice drafting game from 2011? Crazy. Dice 
placement? Dice drafting. You basically draft the dice out of oh, the middle. Oh, so you draft them out and use and the they dice to take various stuff. actions that's with true. that dice. So, wow. Um, yeah, that's true. The dice can be used for a number of different oh, cool. things. You basically, you're basically, the, the, the end result, the main brunt of the game is you're using those dice to get tiles. You take those tiles, you put them on a little personal board, and you're trying to make different areas, completely different areas. Basically, you have like grasslands, and you have forests, and you have castles, and I don't know what else. It's the realm of your places. kingdom. So you're building your, your, your burgundy. <laughs> you're building out your burgundy. And there's there's bonuses That's for finishing certain areas the quickest. You feel like filling up big giant areas give you more points. There's some uh, a little bit of slight bit of resource management. You have some silver and things going on. You can build buildings that give you superpowers. There is a lot of things going on in this game. But this is probably a midweight feld, I would say. Midweight? It's for feld. For feld. For feld. Yeah, midweight feld game. Well, I just want to make that clear because midweight feld versus midweight. Two very different yeah, things. This is a midweight fell game. So it's, um, it's a really solid one. It's, it's on the light end of the heavy games. Light end of heavy games? Yes. Maybe. Yeah. But you know what? Every time I play this game, it's awesome. almost without fell. You, without fell. <laughs> without fell. I see what you did there. Without fell. That was terrible. Without fell. Without, without fail. Without failed. <laughs> I always collect the animals. I don't know why. I always do the you animal have collection. An obsession with animals. I'll, I, I always do the animal. I, I have to get chickens and pigs. You guys are gonna have to keep an eye on them. If I ever like disappear, die I have a farm. early, you're gonna end up with like you're gonna be the crazy animal man. You're gonna yeah. have like forty. I have animals. a farm and like forty different animals, like pigs living in the house and stuff. <laughs> but anyway, I, I love this game. It's a solid, solid game. The cover is horrendous. Horrendously awesome. And this guy. <laughs> This guy oh. sells it, man. Right yes. there. The art on the box is what sold this game Amber. to me. What do you say? <laughs> no, I'm not doing that right now. Let's just start coughing or something. <laughs> <laughs> I got a cold. <laughs> Don't do that to me. This is a solid. If you're looking for, the, you're looking for a, a breakthrough to the world of Feld, if you ever, haven't ever played a Feld game, this is the one I would suggest. It works for us. It could work for you. works for a lot of people. This is a lot of people. The castles. Game. And it's got a brand new, shiny, like... Like hot off the presses. Oh, is it new release? Reprint Ooh. with expansions in the box. Oh, that's cool. This makes me want to go to Burgundy now too. I want to play. Oh, you're not Castles making Burgundy. a Burgundy? No, you're not. I thought that it's was a the, region. I thought, I thought this region was, was your Burgundy. I believe it's in France. Get, 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 get out. Go. Yeah. Uh oh. In the Loire Valley. Loire. 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 Oh, let's let's read this. Oh no. Lay vow. No, nope, no. Nope. I'm not gonna. You've already annoyed the German population. Let's not do it to the French. That's my number forty-three. The castles of Burgundy. Let's let's finish off this list with a Tristan, bang by saying a massive bang. Two of our heaviest of the heavy games. One of one our heaviest game and two probably a top three heavy game, back to back. 41, 40, 42, Crazy heavy. We're going to start it off with my number 42. It was my 54 last year. It went up, even though I lost the last time we played this, <laughs> which made me sad. <laughs> because I should always win at Spreadsheet the Game. I, did, did I win that? No, Tommy. Oh. He shall, he shall not be named. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember winning that. One. Okay. Okay. That makes Arc sense. I was like, me? This is our heaviest board game we own, as far as I know. I think it's almost the heaviest physically, too. No. I'm just kidding. Not anymore. It's Arc Right. It is a, this is a crazy, monster. heavy economic simulation. So, it is so heavy that they had to take it and make a like mid-weight version of itself. <laughs> so, there's two different versions what? in the box. There is the... I don't know what the name. There's one... It's two different versions. The pansy version? There's the spinning Jenny or something like that. What? Spinning. What does that even mean? I don't know. I like the pansy version better. Let me guess. You introduced us using the heavy game. No, we didn't played you? we played both. We Did played we? the light version and the heavy version. Oh, I was gonna give you credit. And then when we played with threw me to with the with shall, shall not be named, we <laughs> put, there's the water frame, which is and which is the heavy version, and then there's the this. spinning Jenny, which is the lighter version. Oh, two different sets. Yeah. Two different sets of rules for the same game. I have no idea what the names mean, but I'm sure it's something mechanical parts, right? But anyway, this is like I said, this is a heavy economic simulation. Basically, you're building. Uh, 
you're in the industrial era in England, I want to say. I'm just making a guess because you're building uh, factories and different types of machines. As time goes by, you play through several decades, your machines kind of get old and crappy and you have to upgrade your machines to better machines. Uh, hey, look at that. I got it right. You're building an ark, right? <laughs> it's not during the Industrial Revolution. It's during the 18th, 17 and 1800s. So I guess that's steam when the steam stuff was coming along. Anyway, ooh, I'm tired. All right. <laughs> So this game, crazy heavy, crazy complicated, but crazy rewarding in my opinion. If, you, if you're looking for a beast of a Euro game, you want to take it up to the next level. Like oh I said gosh, in another in the previous video, levels. you got to get on your big boy Euro pants to play this game because it is crazy, crazy heavy. It's, but it's really, it's really this, this would almost be a good game for if, if, I, if most college students could handle this game. This would be a good game to play. In an advanced economics game. Because, oh, I can see that totally. Because it yeah. has, it has yep. supply okay. and demand. It has it market market, market factors going on. Basically, price versus supply. You have your workers. As you get more and more workers are hired, your yeah. unemployment goes down. So you have to raise wage. I mean, you have to uh, you, you have to pay more for the workers because they're more scarce to get. Um, it's got all kinds of, of economic things going on. It has the whole, um, as, as time goes by, your machinery, gets, like I said, gets old. So you have to either keep the inefficient machinery or you upgrade machinery to better uh, better factories to, to be more efficient. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of a it's decision. How long am I going to ride this, this out before I switch to something to pay the cost to get to the bigger one? Um, it's, just, it's just an amazing, amazingly great design of an economic game this is right at the edge of my limits of understanding for a game <laughs> and then i got so mad because i wasn't quite getting it that i became obsessed with figuring out how the game worked and by the end i was like yes i think i've got this figured out i got just destroyed but i was excited because i figured out how the game worked and it was really you feel like you accomplish something pretty big when you get down a heavy game like this, I think it's a really cool adventure that normally, yeah, again, if I hadn't gotten obsessed with trying to figure out how the whole engine worked. I, I want to show you. Oh the, my I gotta gosh. I got to show you the board just because. The board it's... makes me weep. <laughs> this board, oh my gosh, man, this game. All right. I'm not, I'm, this is a game that I will not say, hey, let's play Arkwright, but if they play. So here's the player board. I want to do it. See if I can get it without. There you go. That's the player board. Looks thrilling, doesn't it? <laughs> Riveting. Riveting. But here is the board board. Get ready. Pull out your calculators. It's time to time to play some. So makes me blind. Just Arc right. At... Woo! Does that not look thrilling? <laughs> if any of you are still awake after looking at that, hey, well done. Don't be dissing able... my game. <laughs> You may be Just because you suck at it, don't be dissing it. Yeah, it's not that I suck at it. I understand oh, that it. That was probably crazy loud. Yeah, good job. But this that. goes first before that. Oh, you kill me, Smalls. What are you doing to your poor viewers? They're gonna cry. You guys have been deaf many times over because. Yeah, they well, they know we're. I know I'm loud. I'm obnoxious. I'm gonna have to start doing sign language. I gotta learn sign language now. They didn't, didn't, <laughs> didn't deal with me. But that's it. If you're looking for a big boy that's or a big lady, right put on your big lady Euro pants too. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. You know, it's not gender specific. It'll. It's painful either way. This game, <laughs> it's this game will. Game will beat you up. Are. The game, game. This game will beat you up no matter what your gender it is. is. Like, it is not <laughs> discriminating on who. It there you go. Arkwright. <laughs> My number forty-two. It went up even though I lost. This is crazy. <laughs> All right, time for the one new game. It is also, like I said, probably top three-ish. Of our heaviest games. Oh. If you want a game that is punitation upon punitation, and when just when you think you've been punitated too much, <laughs> here comes some more punitation. And that is... Punishment. Just use punishment. Antiquity. Good grief, this game. Oh, I love this, this game. This game. This game. I need to play it again because right now I'm still on the sort of hate this game. <laughs> I'm still obsessing with it. I'm telling you, like, I had why, with... Why is this section Arkwright. lighter than the rest? That's weird. Huh? It's got, like... Because it's haunted. I don't That's know. weird. All right, Antiquity. This is a splotter game. Splotter, splotter, splotter. Oh, this is a beast. Splotter. I don't feel like I've got this one quite figured out yet. 
What are you looking for? Looking for where it says splatter. Oh, there it is. Right here. Splatter. Where it says splatter. Yeah. So thanks. <laughs> so this is a splatter game. This is a, uh, I guess, a simulation, like a, almost a sieve. It's, it's a sieve builder. Sieve building Believe game. It or not, so basically, it's a you start. Monster. You start off with your own little player board. This represents your little your world. And you basically start off by building different buildings. You use those buildings to get help you get resources to build more buildings. And it's kind of a, you get an engine going. But while you're doing all this, you're polluting the crap out of the land. So basically when you're harvesting your crops and stuff, you're basically destroying the land. And it's like it's like a creep that creeps out from your city and it goes and slowly destroys oh everything. Gosh, gets- Before you know it, the whole world is like covered in death. <laughs> On top of that, all your people are dying. So you got to... Oh, boy. You, <laughs> You got, you, got, you got people dying all over the place. You got to find places to put the bodies in your city. Before you know it, you have nowhere to put buildings. You got bodies everywhere. You remember when I said village was dark? I was <laughs> wrong. I forgot how dark this game is. Antiquity. Oh, it's oh, all no. about pollution and death. That's basically what it is. Yep, pollution, pollution and death. This is another looker. Hey, I'm just saying. Hey. It is not a Don't game. Don't be dissing life. my game. Hey, so here's the here's the, poli- the pollution or whatever you want to call it. Black so, chips of death. Yeah. So you got all that. And then there's where's the where's all the, the and these are all gray dead people. <laughs> there's a little baggy of them. <laughs> there's like a, there, but they're little gravestones. They have little na- people's names on them. Oh yeah, the, it wasn't the people that um, helped play test and play stuff. test and Kickstarter or whatever. Yeah. Which I'm like. I think that's just. But amusing. it's a, it's a, yeah. it's a, if you like, well, this is a heavy game, but if you like this games that game. have uh, the Tetris y stuff where you're te- Tetrising in buildings and things. Oh my gosh, this is Tetris on crack. So basically, you have uh, little cities and you have a player board yeah. that you Tetris stuff. Here's the little, uh, here's the beautiful, the beautiful map that you're using. Look at this. This is, look at how glorious that map is. Man, that just makes you want to vomit. It's an awesome map. <laughs> it's boring. <laughs> You're boring. Maybe, but you know what? I didn't try to sell it as, you know. <laughs> I don't even try. This is an awesome Same. game. If you're looking for No, it's, it's good. If it's you, good. I give but him grief. If, you're, if, you're, if you like heavy Euro games. This is heavy. And you, you like games, the games that, that challenge you. <laughs> yeah. Games that give you a challenge. If you like melting brain cells. If you like games that give you a challenge. Say it right. Give, give you a it's challenge. It's a challenge, okay? It's a heavy game. Oh, 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 oh man, I should not have taken this stuff out. This is fun. I'm gonna watch. Right oh, flatten that. Hey, look, you did it. No, I didn't. Here we go. Oh, jeez. Here we go again. Alright. That's my number 41, Antiquity. I don't know where you would sh- should start for slaughter games. So they're all really heavy, they're all really complicated, they're all really tough. But what's interesting about slaughter games is. Most of the rule books are fairly short. There's there's some mid to heavy Euro games that have uh, have more rules than uh, splatter games do. It's just I'm not done talking about it. You can take it. <laughs> look at the back of the box. Let's do a back of the box review. Oh look, nothing to see. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so let's take it. Let's do a back of the box review. So if you're familiar with the channel, I do back of the box reviews. All right, so I'm a firm believer on keeping the information lean. <laughs> this though might be a bit extreme. Do you know what this looks like? You remember those shirt boxes like JC Penney's and uh-uh, stuff? Uh-uh. That's what that looks like this has been in. They just put it in a shirt box. And wait, wait, do you want more but but see the, the redeeming thing is you're not getting a lot of information on the back. Okay, okay. But you always can flip it to the front to get all the information you need about the Wait. Oh hey, yeah. What about <laughs> that? So there you go. So if you're looking for a heavy, heavy Euro game, and like I say, if you like games that challenge you, so it almost has the feel of a a really hard cooperative game where you're like fighting against the game, but at the same time you're fighting against the other players. But really, in our one one play, we've only played one time. We played this one time. We were so busy struggling to live that we were nice. We to were each other. we weren't even trying to beat each other up. <laughs> It, was it almost semi- t- it almost turned into a cooperative. I guess. It was semi cooperative at the time, and it's like I'm gonna throw you a bone here because I'm dying. I will <laughs> say this though: I actually survived because of my. No, I gave you guys more chump charity than I got. Chump charity. Chump, if you played, uh, oh, uh, what is it, Mario okay. Party? Yes, chump charity. Mario chump charity. Party. <laughs> I remember. These I gave things. you guys some chump charity. Oh, I won. I destroyed them. 
You may have. I survived to 15, 20, or whatever the end of the game is. There you go. That is my 50 to 41. I don't know if you learned much. I guess you know which ones they are. (laughs) Or which ones to avoid. Which ones to avoid. Yeah. This was a new one to the list, so obviously it wasn't anything last year. That's it, folks. It's funny that it's new because it's ancient. It's almost antiquified. That's not probably a word. (laughs) Antiquified. All right. As always, it's time for some stats. Let's preview the next list. Ooh, what's next? Oh, man. Let's let's take a peek. Let's take a peek. Okay. Ooh. I'm going to call this the the midweight Euro craziness. Ooh. Makes sense because it's bogged down in this one by heavy hitters. There's some heavy ones, but mostly midweight. All right, let's take a look. Four new games this time around. There's only one. Okay. Four, four, four the next time, not this time around. Coming up on the next round. Four new games. Got only it. one that went up. So that leaves five that went down. Oh, it's the round of punitation. Oh. Whew. The four new games. And, and, and here, fun fact. That's four. English. Four. Four. All four new games are right in a row. Right in a row. Four in a row. It's a little, little spoiler, a little preview of next time. Bye.